call this meeting of the Kensington School Board to order at 6.06 .06 p.m. Um, I will open up uh, public input at 6.06 .06 p.m. It will be open for 30 minutes. Does anybody want to say anything? Yeah, I have to course, but is this the time? Sure. Actually, wait, before you do that, can I, I would like to read the net line acknowledgement. Oh, yes. First, okay. Yes. So, uh, this Kensington School Board meeting is located on Indakana. Is that how I'm pronouncing that right? Indakana. Okay. Yeah, okay. Which is the traditional ancestral homeland of the Abenaki, Penacook, and Wabanaki peoples, past and present. We acknowledge and honor with gratitude the land and waterways and the Al Nobak, which are the people who have stewarded Indakana throughout the generations. We will teach others to know and honor Native Americans. I showed the kids the, um, the, that. Awesome. They were so excited to see the thing like, on the official document. That's oh. great. Oh, the agenda. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. They were so please. Okay. And they send you <gasps> the letters. The letters. This is the best part of being on a school board. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay, so Enjoy. Enjoy. do you want to explain what this is? So the letters, capital T, capital L, are trademark. Yes. Um, are a typical third grade thing where they are working on their persuasive writing skills, talking about how when you want to persuade somebody about something, you should have reasons, you should be using your best polite words, um, it's different than begging, and they think of something that would benefit the school, and they should get to think of their own thing. And it has to be something that everybody could benefit from, not just them personally. And then they write a letter to the school board requesting their thing. There's some interesting requests. I think that you will enjoy reading them. I can't wait. You obviously do not have to honor the requests. We talked about how things cost money and you can't just come up with the money <laughs> and budget. <laughs> Yeah, we went, we went a little bit like just just over. They didn't even know that the money from the budget came from the town. So we, we went over that briefly, and they realized they couldn't ask for something like a second story to the school, which was really a popular thing they wanted. Um, or air conditioning. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wanted air conditioning, except for me. My letter is in there. <laughs> <laughs> so I think last time we did this, um, we each took like we like one of us took it home, read them all, and then just dropped it off to the other person's house. We divided them. Yeah, but the, oh, because I, I thought that we we divided them. We all got a chance reported. to read all of them, and then I think we did them. afterwards, but we divided them, reported back, and then if we all right, then that's what we'll do. Yeah. So we'll divide them three ways. We each take them home, and then what we do is we write letters back okay. and just thank them for their for their request, and and you know. We'll consider it or Let whatever. them know if it's an agenda item. Let them know if it's an agenda. Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. The Gaga Pit came out of one of the letters. Like, well, the Gaga Pit was already. It was already in motion, but that was definitely one of the letters. It was actually yeah. Chloe's, and I just yeah. got and let her think that she. And then and then it went through the PTO and started the school board. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. so, so, an example of like an actual. Yeah, and yeah. like in the past, they asked for shovels for the playground, and yeah. they, they got some new shovels. Yeah. That kind of thing. Awesome. It's really cool. Yeah. All right, thanks. Years so, ago, the fourth and fifth grade petitioned to act to have morning recess oh, yeah. because they didn't have it, morning recess was just K to three, and they felt like fourth and fifth graders should have recess as well, and they had very good reasons why. Great. I love that. They should also have a morning recess, and they got that. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So sometimes it works. Their persuasion is quite good. In high school, we petitioned to be able to wear pants. And <laughs> Sorry, it was a Catholic school, and we had to wear. It's not like we couldn't wear anything. We were wearing skirts, and the girls wanted to wear pants. That's that's the background that was not in. Okay, I'll just moving right along. So thank you very much <laughs> to the third grade class. We will split those up and uh, go from there. So. Um, Oh, a non-public session may be called at any time in accordance with Chapter one, uh, 91A, 3, 2, and then A, B, C, D, E, or I. So uh, going over the minutes, uh, the public meeting minutes from November 9th, 2022. Um, there was one thing that I actually noticed, and it was that 
it was just a little thing. Um, <laughs> we were talking about it's that wellness wake up wasn't called by the right name. Just a little thing. Where is it? It's like welcome wellness, and it's, it should say wellness wake up. Wellness so wake it's up. On yep. page, the top of page three. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. That's it. That's the only thing I found. Did anybody else have any uh, changes? I did not. Okay. All right. So, um, does anybody want to make a motion to accept to accept the public meeting minutes as amended? As amended. All right. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then the uh, non-public meeting minutes. I'll, I'll move that we uh, accept those as written. Okay. okay, all in favor? Aye. All right, aye. Can you take this? Oh, yes. All right, committee reports. Policy committee. So we've got uh, policy JEB, which uh, Becky, you're going to talk to us about? Yep, so this is um, the most recent version with all of the edits. And thank you so much for all of your policy suggestions and looking at that with like a policy eye. Um, it's super, super helpful. Um, so we've got a lot of strike throughs, new language, um, trying to catch some of the making things gender, gender neutral move, moving forward as well. Um, and I think this is kind of where we stand. I think after Josh had made his last um, suggestions, I went back in and took another shot at the process language, and that's the one in green, um, just so that there's some understanding of what that, that would entail. That um, in this time period as far as a screening, not necessarily identifying the names of the screenings, but just know that there would be screenings for academic readiness and social emotional development of students that are requesting their early entrance. Okay. That makes sense to me, Becky. The only reason why I highlighted that initially is that it's something that, it, like it's, it's a process that you would have to go through in, in your calling note here. So I just don't know whether or not we want to draw a reference to that or not. I kind of feel like we need to because I, I don't want it to be so loose that it seems subjective. So I feel like I need to be able to have some process in place so that I'm not screening one child for this and a different child the next year for something else that our screenings are we're looking for the same sort of readiness for yep. kids. Okay. If that, that makes sense. And it's only if their birthday falls within the month of October. October was sort of that window where they could yeah. ask for the screenings to happen for. Okay. The, the, the other suggestion I had, Becky, and this is not material, but that first sentence, like leading into the birth certificate, I was wondering if that might be able to fit somewhere within, like maybe before the process sentence. Yep. Yeah, I actually, so I actually, I started changing before I hit the editing thing on, so that, that was the first sentence of the policy, and then I realized I was editing and then turned the editing feature on. Yeah. <laughs> um, because normally, like when we're looking at these from the policy committee mm -hmm. perspective, we have either the model or the original to work with. And if I'm not mistaken, this one, I think it starts off with a student and not that opening sentence. It like, starts be, with. Here's the current one right here, Josh. Oh, this, okay. Yeah, this, it does start with the birth Got certificate. It. Okay, all right. If that's how it starts, then that's perfect. I have a question. Is the birth certificate, I, I don't know how it works if like a, a family moves in from another country. We've got immigrants here. Like, does that, does that affect, uh, like does a birth certificate, is that something that anybody would have from any country? Or is that like, it, like it's a proof, some proof of? Your kids don't have them, yeah, because they weren't born here. So like, so yeah, I don't know if that, if that's unintentionally going to create a problem for somebody when like a slightly different wording would, it's fine. I think you could say a birth, if you really wanted to get it, you could say a birth certificate or uh, equivalent document or something like, uh, okay. from country, or, I, something like that, but yeah, I think, yeah. I just didn't, I didn't know if that would be yeah. a problem, but I mean, you, 
went through that. So if it wasn't a problem, then. Okay. All right, so I'm, I'm not sure what it's called in another country, so you could say or equivalent document. Or equivalent document, document. document. Yeah. yeah. So um, are we voting on this? So you can either take it, this could be a first read, and come back, and we can finalize it. It does not have to go back to the policy committee. It's specific to Kensington, mm -hmm. and I'd say it would remain here. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's really, you know, that's why we tried to give it to you in advance. Um, obviously, we, we went through the scenario earlier in this year, and, you know, um, Becky did a nice job working with other elementary principals to get some uh, information for the um, uh, version that she um, gave to you. So um, it's whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, we would like to take a vote to, to make some changes because we feel it would be in the best interest of kids coming to our schools. Yeah. Yeah, I would love for it to be a first read to be able, because I know I've had a couple of families contact me knowing this was on the agenda but not able to make it tonight. So just for them to be able to see it in the minute, see what oh, we yeah. talked about, okay. and then maybe bring it back next month for right. okay. that gives sure. other families a chance to yeah, so in. We should, uh, can I move to have it attached to the minutes, or, so if how, or how will it be uh, made available to them? The current one, so they would, if it's a first read, we can attach what um, attach Becky this? is providing yeah. as a first read. Okay. Yeah. The original stays intact until yep. we change that. Yep, so that's So we can have this as a first read, and then in our next packet, we'll have you know, whatever changes of today. Perfect. Be okay. first. That's great, and then that gives people a chance to weigh in. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for saying that. Thank you. All right. Um, so safety and security. Okay. Uh, Superintendent Evaluation Committee. Um, we have not met. We're working. We're just still working on the goals and uh, working with Dr. Ryan to solidify those and go from there. The uh, school study update. We have a meeting next Tuesday. Tuesday. So we haven't met in a while, but we will on Tuesday. Okay, general correspondence. I have just one piece from the town that um, the building is being assessed, which happens you know, every five years or something like that. And just if we didn't want that to happen, we needed to notify them in writing by tomorrow. Okay. So, okay. It's just a, it's an external walk around. It's not an internal okay. assessment. They just walk the perimeter. So just a tax assessment? Um, yeah. 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 All right, thank you. Do you need to read it or do you want me just to attach it to it? It's pretty, yeah, go ahead pretty standard. I think you probably all got them. Yeah, and you also, know, yeah, for the same letter. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I didn't even pass it down if you guys want to see. No, yeah, you're good. Yeah. All right, SAE Communications and Community Engagement Committee. Mm, uh, that's supposed to be discussed at that joint board meeting in January. Yeah. Okay. That's one of the agenda items. So. Great. Yeah. All right, so business and financials. I know I looked over and saw Molly and waved to her and then realized oh that's a photograph. I'll just wave to a photograph. <laughs> yeah, I did wave a real picture of this. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> but I so Michelle was gonna give Chris the manifest to bring over to be signed. We signed over. That is taken care of. And so in your board pack there was a current year financial. So we had about nineteen thousand dollars added from the prior month. Um, I did put um, what it is on the column next to the books and it's just over in the snow plowing, which hopefully we don't have good winter, but did anyone have any questions on the current year financial? No. Okay. Well, I guess um, the, the one question that I have over yeah. on the trust fund section, is it just coincidental that those balances are the exact same? They were established in the same year. Yeah, and we okay. put the same amount of yeah. it. Yeah, all right. Yeah, like so we do get trust fund reports where you might see a little bit of interest gain, but we get them um, very rarely. So um, we typically only see a change once a year once we have to trust them. Okay. So next up is the draft budget review. Um, so I believe last time we met, we had handed out the draft budget and also fully included it in the board pack. Um, I included a few things. I included the high level pie chart, which kind of shows overall the different categories. And then what I'm doing this year across all the districts is like 
most of the budgets are people. So what I've done is I put in our personnel report um, by account number. So if you have questions on who's in any of the accounts, we listed exactly. So if you had a question on how many um, teachers we have, there's 13 listed. Or how many aides we have, um, there's two under regular ed aid and six under special ed aid. And it shows exactly who's in each of those positions. And then lastly, we included the line by line default. I'm oh, sorry, the line by line budget, I should say. Um, and we did have several rounds of review with Becky. Um, it is a large increase, but it's a large increase based off of student need and legal requirements to provide to students. And so I did take a look at the default, and the default is about 137000 less. And the reason why is in the default, you can't include positions unless they were in the previous budget. So when we pull forward money and hire the extra kindergarten teacher, that can't be in the default because that hasn't been in an approved budget voted on by the taxpayers yet. So we would lose if the default were, if, if, if we lost the budget in the election and the, we got the default, we would lose a kindergarten teacher? Um, well, you'd lose that budget and we'd have to figure out what could be cut to be able to support them. Okay. So budgets are always one bottom line number, but Unfortunately, because that position hasn't been in a past budget that has passed with the voters, I couldn't include it in the default. And so other things that are not included are increases for non-CBA folks. So the front office, the principal, the paras, um, any increases on utilities, um, pretty much everything related to maintenance, the increase on first student, and any increase on food service, which we're seeing a lot uh, because of the price of food. Yeah. So that's really causing that 137000 delta between your proposed and the default. Okay. So what I, I did was I copied um, our the proposed budget that has all of our notes on it, and I highlighted the things that we can actually touch. Okay. Oh, my gosh. So that's so helpful. Like, things... Um, like salaries and whatnot, like you can't touch this. So only, so if we, if we were gonna go through, line by line, we'll only go through things with the highlight because that's really all that's discretionary. And it's really just things like how much we put in for professional development, how much we put in for supplies, how much we put in for replacement furniture. many books we buy. Yeah, you'll see most of the budget. Yeah. yeah. So, I know, I think Allison had requested, let's just talk about the things that we can actually make changes to because we can't. Yeah. <laughs> Ours is little comparatively to the other ones that she does. So yeah, I'm happy to go through like line by line and just talk about them, what's in them. I mean, I've got notes um, there, like what's included in all of them. And yeah. Um, I have to say we do build budgets based off of need, not the pocket we want. And right. We had several about several rounds of review with Becky and Chris trying to identify areas. So we really trimmed it the best that we could. And yeah. I give credit for, to Becky for putting together a really good budget. Does it, and this is a question that I don't know if I have. This is maybe a stupid question. Um, I don't know how to say that more eloquently today. Is are there any any of these that could be covered by grant funds? Like, is there any grant of app, is any money that we could cover by grant funding we, instead? We have cut about every penny spent in our grants. 
Okay. Either on staffing, professional development, uh, needs for special education through our IDA. Yeah. And you'll see the IDA funds were cut based yes. on mm -hmm. our SAU being able to do by need. Yeah. It's by town. Yeah. So where Dr. Bennett in the past would be like, oh, you need support for this or you need this equipment. I have a pool of money she can't. Yeah. We get an allocation of about $10,000 and that goes really quickly here. Yeah, so yeah. Um, we would normally look at that. Yeah. Um, the money in, okay. in our grants has been reduced. Okay. And ESSER is, is running out. So yeah. we pay for staff member on ESSER, so that will have to be incorporated at some point too. So we do typically get, get a new REAP grant, so it's the um, like rural school grant each September, which is usually about $10,000. Okay. But I, I don't want to count on it when, yeah. right, and take something out thinking we're getting it, and then for some reason we don't get it next year. I don't. Okay. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Do you want to just kind of like go through yellow line by yellow line and talk about them? I, I kind of think we have to have a goal place before we do that like if we're thinking that 12.79 is too high like what isn't too high like how far do we work back into and then see what we might be able to pull from I, I, I do just want to say that, that it, it, it most years that's what we do we pick we kind of pick a number and we say we would like to not go above three percent or whatever this year it seems it seems like there's nothing normal about this year Right. Like in terms of this budget increase, it's just a it's a whole like perfect storm of grant money running out and a sudden new mandatory needs and a whole bunch of other stuff. But am I am I right that next year things should even out a bit more? You shouldn't see the twelve percent. You shouldn't increase. see that much of an increase, right? But it, this is this is an increase that needs to happen because of the circumstances that we're in. Um, so normally I would say yes, let's look at that. But I and, and I don't necessarily think we shouldn't. But but I I, I just I want to keep in mind that this year is it's 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 an anomaly. Yeah. But um, I mean yeah, we could do that. We could try to bring it down to ten percent. I mean that's an arbitrary number, but super arbitrary. But and is that do we? This might be another dumb question. Is there like, do we know how much money that is? Like, do we know how much? Well, is there a no. I just, I can't, I can't think of that. Um, I don't have it off the top of my head, but I can look it up. It would be like 43. $43,000. So $43,000. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't, I guess we can do more that one. I guess the question becomes, do we think... I'm curious what the total is of all the... <laughs> what is the right. total of the, the things we can touch? That's a great question. And I guess it comes down to passing a budget, right? And so do we think a 10% increase, is that that much more likely than a 12% increase to pass? I mean, like, yes. are we going to sit here for an hour and debate this for shave off futility? Too. Like, I, I guess that's... But it was 14, wasn't it? <laughs> Let's start with that. Oh, was it? Yeah. <laughs> the right, I like that. Optimistic right there. We need so a win. If we have a ten percent increase, then the total would be four million forty-five thousand two hundred and fifty-seven dollars, which is one hundred and two thousand five forty-five less than we're at right now. So we're looking. So we're looking for about a hundred thousand dollars. So hundred. Correct. So like, I guess I'll play devil's advocate. I mean, do we? Do we? Do we just put this forward? I mean, I guess that's. I, I, well, I certainly want to go through because I want us to have gone through it. You know what I mean? Um, but I think we that might be what ends up happening. But um, I guess I would like us to go through it with the mentality of let's go through it to educate ourselves, not to say can we cut off this thousand dollar item that is not going to make a bit of difference. Right. Well, you know right. what I mean? You know yeah. what I mean? Like absolutely. I'm just saying that I don't want us to just not go through it. No, problem. yeah, but I just don't yeah. want us to spend, you know, debating when we're not when it's well, not. It, I mean, it comes down to something like we've got um, sixty dollars per student under supplies by hundred forty. So if we say no, we'll do fifty dollars per student, that saves you fifteen hundred dollars. 
So that's the sort of like I don't want to call it nickel and dime, but like that's essentially. But if we do that through all the items, there's potential for saving. Are we going to come to a hundred thousand dollars? I don't think so. No, but yeah. But that's the sort of conversation. Is like well, next year we get fifty dollars per student and not sixty dollars per student, or. What about looking purely at the changes, though? Like, if we can see the dollars in budget change, if we... Yeah, this is me just saying that not knowing how the math is going to work out, but... Yeah, but you're bringing is that, might that be a better way to look at it? Because that would bring us back to more of a neutral even budget year over year? Or is that not the way this is working? I mean, you feel like the first line item is a 100% increase? Well, yeah, like overall, we have a 12% increase. So if we look at all of the budget change items and we think about maybe bringing them, like for discussion purposes, we bring them back to zero, is that going to help us out at all? Or am I thinking about the math wrong? Well, I think that is where we start We when we build it. It's like, what do we need? So it, it does start at zero because yep. we, and I, like, we literally enter each one of these new every year, nothing rolls over. Yeah, Becky is correct. The only thing that rolls over is when I hit roll on the salary. Salary grade. That's so, like, I'll go. So, when we're so building the budget, I'll go to Kristen and I'll be like, "How much did we spend on laminating last year?" You know, like, what what right, did it right, cost? Right, right, right. Actual cost of laminating. So, I have like a more accurate number right, 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 right. versus like, okay, what did our folders yeah. cost us? Like, you know. So yeah, like that's one thing I'm thinking. I'm like, well, we can reuse the folders, but that's three hundred dollars. Three hundred down from our hundred thousand. Some of my kids will. I know, I know, I know. They, they get a little. Maybe some duct tape action happening, which is totally fine. I'm all for. Yeah, I guess the reason why I'm saying that is because those are all increases. So if we, yeah. if those are flexible items that have been highlighted. Maybe we look at those and see if those are ones where we can bring them down. Yeah, that's fine. That's, I, we can have that conversation <clears throat> for sure. I just don't know that it's going to be beneficial in the long run. Like if I look at the first page, we're going to save four grand if we brought that back to neutral, which I don't think is going to do anything for us. But I don't know if there's big ticket items. And also, I don't think it's a good idea to cut out things like professional services for curricular development. Like, no, I'm just thinking about this purely from a murderer's perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, right. I'm just so, curious. I, I guess, yeah, I want, I want to, I want to look and figure out what, what is the number, if, if, if all of this was just, what is the total of the, of the highlighted? I think, was, I think Chris is doing that in his head right now. Yeah. In his head. Mm -hmm. And maybe it just needs to be said out loud before we have this conversation that this is a really terrible conversation to have to have. Oh my god, yeah. And I know we don't want to cut things like professional development and, and I'm not saying that's what we're going to do, but like, if we want to take an honest to goodness look at this, and we don't want to have to go to that default budget, it sounds like it is this year would actually have to go forward. You're talking roughly thirty thousand can change. So the 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 highest we can change is thirty thousand. Yeah. Okay, so then so then I mean what, what percentage difference would that even bring us? Half okay. to if we're at twelve point seven, then it, <clears throat> it won't even bring you below twelve, I think. No, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is why I'm saying that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And 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 that in combination with the fact that I know that you didn't <laughs> throw in every single possible copy. <laughs> There's a lot of copying paper it's in here. Pretty, I know, it's pretty. <laughs> it's a pretty stringent uh, uh, list to begin with. Yeah. I think I. I mean I. I think this is just what it is. If you go back to thirty thousand dollars spread out over a town, is that it's right. gonna make or break us? I mean it's just that's not where the bulk of it, the change is going Yeah, the, but then yeah. it's your cell point too. Like if you if we go through this exercise and we gain less than a percent, like what 
does that matter when you're talking about total point seven nine or that's that's what I'm like that's this? kind of why that's the only reason why I mean that's not the only reason but that's why I think we should do it so that we can say yeah. we've done it and then this is what we came up with and it saves us I, I think six hundred twenty dollars yeah right. I think doing it though is that we have the yellow figures yeah we, it's it's been done right and we know that the the math adds up to not even a percent right that we have with yeah it. so to me that is the exercise. Uh, yeah I mean yeah I agree. I don't, I don't think we can. And I'm not seeing anything that seems really all that expendable no. anyway. It took out 30,000, I think we're right down to 11.97. Oh, we did we get right below that 12 threshold. Oh, my, why? <laughs> but, it, but we would have to cut everything in yellow. Every, every addition yeah. we made. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's not, those aren't even additions. Those are just that's the right. change. Yes, the change, change over yeah. last year. So okay. if there was an increase over last year. That's what you added up. It's a thirty thousand yeah. increase from Roughly last year. Roughly thirty. Yeah. So like all the budget change figures, yep. whether they're yellow yep. or not, that will get us to the four seventy two ninety six. Yeah, I took out thirty thousand from the post. That's how I did it. Yeah. Right. Eleven point ninety seven. I'm just. I'm just. Getting my arguments ready, ready. So it's not even four percent, though. Yeah. No. no. Okay. Molly, what what is uh, the percentage of inflation that we saw across the country this year? Uh, I think it's between eight and nine percent. Eight and nine percent. I th I believe so. Yeah, so, I think that's what she said. Yeah, so I mean, you're looking at inflation at eight or nine percent nationally. We're at twelve, right? But we yeah. had to add staff because of the yeah. needs of students. Yep. So if you just looked at that, yeah. and that was an argument that we yeah. had. Yeah. I mean, I, there's just I, this is not frivolous. Like, there's nothing yeah. about this that it doesn't like sweat blood. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's that's just what this is. I mean, we were. I, I will be completely honest. Becky and I sat and I said, she said, "Do I try to cut anything?" I said, "What?" What? Yeah, I asked several times. And I said, no, sure. we can't. We need to present this because this is everything that we would need. This is yes. everything we need to. We could cut a thousand dollars here and there. We could still program, but cutting out six thousand dollars for student supplies. Right. What's the benefit? We're going to make it up as parents anyways, right? So. Well, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, exactly. exactly. When it comes down to what you're paying, is it? Is right. It and student bodies. We're cutting student body activity. That just doesn't feel right. To no. Pay. That's where we have to cut. But that's the reality. Of that, so. Yeah, I just looked it up and it said uh, annual inflation in the U.S. is it's actually 7.1 now after being at 7.7. 7. Okay. That's just a quick search though. And I guess it depends on what source you look at. And I know in neighboring districts they're talking about giving um, non-union staff significantly more raises as well. So they're, they're, they're recognizing the cost of inflation in neighboring districts as well. Yeah. Okay. All right, so what's our next step? Um, so if you're um, good with the number, we can approve it tonight. What we do in January is come back and we'll have the warrant articles written for you. So this would be the one that how you ever want to use the two trust funds since we don't have a contract. So it'll just be the three warrants, but we'll finalize that for you to put forward. I'll invite Harold to come in and talk with us too. Harold Bragg, our yeah. moderator, yeah. talk about the process and walk you through that. The only other thing is, you know, I just throw it out there because I feel like I have to. I mean, you know, you could reduce by using some of your trust fund balances for projects. I was about to ask. Right. So, yeah. That's an option you do have, but do you want to decrease those in any capacity? So, I mean, if you cut 25 out, you're still about 30,000 in there. So that's 50 grand that you could use for projects. Right. That's the discretion of the board. That's not the discretion of us. So I throw that out there. If you feel yeah. 50 grand would get you under that 12%, is that something you're willing to do? Knowing that if there is a major issue with a student coming in or having to leave, right. we don't have it funded. Right. Um, so. It's nice to create it, but we're not at a place where I think you could really tap in unless you really feel that getting under 12 is going to do no. something for you in front of the community. I don't know what it is. I don't feel, I think, I think, 
I think that could be an explanation, though, that you looked at those trust funds yeah. and you yeah. realize it, but you don't feel yeah. that's the... I mean, we, we have them there. If something, here's the deal, this is already very bare bones. Right. So so already we're, we're in a risky position if something happens. So we have right. the trust funds there for that. Um, the, now we also have to decide how much to put, how much to request to put into the trust funds this right. year. And I, I'm thinking maybe this might be a good year not to request anything sure. uh, to offset that. Um, Maybe that's what we do instead. Yeah, we usually request, I think, 10,000 each. She started out with 20, and then we've done 10 in the last couple of years. Because of COVID, yeah. And um, so so I'm just thinking, since it's such a huge bump, maybe this might be a year that we just take off from adding to yep. the trust fund. I think we sit with that, and then we see what next year brings. Because it's, yeah. Yeah, what if next year is another 12%? And so the other thing that I would just put out there when we talk to the community, you could try to do a bond payment for the big roof project for the HVAC, but if that goes no, you're left without that being part and you cannot fix it over a year. Okay. So that's why we would not recommend an award uh, or to have it as a bond payment as a award. So we, that's why we put it in the budget. So and that's $128,000, but we realize that's something that needs to be done to keep this full operation. Right, right, right. So I think there's rationale to why you're 12.5. Inflation, contractual uh, numbers, repairs to the HVAC, and that's really it. And then non discretional was like we just discussed $30,000. Yep. Okay. Well, $4 million budget is. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So um, we do, are we making a motion about not requesting $10,000? For each of the things, or we're just we're just approving this now. Just to approve the budget now. We'll bring you the three warrant articles, right, right, right. and at that time, That's you can decide if you want to say we're not going to put anything there, or you will. So we'll, we'll write it as we years years pass, and then you can decide on a, a dollar figure there. Okay. And then that was what we'll need to be able to for our um, meeting in February. Okay. Okay. Chris, where is where is the um, HVAC? Really? If you look at the the project line. Yeah, and this is an older version, but it's on page nine of twelve under the facilities. Um, the it's one hundred and nine thousand is, is what it's. Is it? It's not on that summary. It's in that repair and maintenance. It's under the yeah under the notes. So the total line is one hundred and twenty-eight thousand. One hundred and nine of that is the rooftop. Okay. In this page, Josh, do you have this one with the notes on it? It's all the way down. Yeah, page nine under facilities. Oh, there it is. Hello. Mm -hmm. That's a nice big number. Yep. So, and some of the notes are not. 17.5 tons of Good. rooftop. Okay. So that is it. When you come back in January, Chris, will you have something kind of drafted if we do you want to do a bond? We could, Molly and I would work on that. Okay. Different options for you. Yeah. Well, so I we mean, can, we can. Like, yeah, just to have the option yeah. to think about it. And, don't look at what the totals say in the notes. Look at the total on the actual budget line. Yeah. Yeah. Can Joe come to the uh, in the hearing <laughs> in January? Sure. <laughs> How much of a dire need to HVAC unit is. Mm -hmm. Do you think that would be a good idea? I mean, I thought you were kidding, but. No. <laughs> well, I think it's, I mean, it's something that the board, we've already deferred for a year. Mm -hmm. It was on our, our plan to have right. it done last year, and so we've already deferred it one year. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So um, I'll move that we approve this budget. I can second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 No, wait, this says that the budget changes a lot. I know, this is older. This is, my notes is an older version. Okay, got it. We had the one in the packet. Can print this for us. Um, so that's why we give you an updated version. <laughs> so my, the one that's in the packet has all the correct numbers, but this my my notes are in this one. Yes, I got it. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah, I was like, we did it. No, <laughs> no, we didn't. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, so the most up-to-date one to be 12. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Bobby. And then the last item is adequacy. So in addition, so so you have your budget. The budget is the cost side. And then on the revenue side, you have adequacy. And then all your local and state and federal sources, like food service sales, earning on uninvested, any cap fee that you might get, um, 
and that offsets what you have to raise in tax. So in addition, the state is decreasing our adequacy. So it's, it's basically the revenue to offset the budget that you have in your hand is going down, which means that more has to be raised in taxes to support the budget that you have in your hand. So that all those tax figures were in the email from David Ryan. Um, it is out of our control at the school level, um, and it is a state level issue. Okay. So in addition to the rising cost in the budget, you're also going to have less revenue to offset the cost, which means the tax rate would have to be higher to support what's in the budget. Okay. Do we have the tax rate? Not really. So that adequacy draft that David gave you is still a draft. You don't usually finalize that till springtime, right, Molly, or, or get the finalized draft from them till the spring? So that, that adequacy is an estimate. However, right. in that pack that David sent out is the final tax rate that was just set this past November. Um, and if you don't see it, I can find it in 17. Okay. What I'll do is I'll pull the tax card and I'll send it to the three of you. Twenty point five five, I think. That sounds about right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I have it right here. I'll share it with all of you. You've had a day. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cooper and Beth are coming home from soccer right now. So. Oh. That's actually 19.86. I looked at 2020. Yeah. I was going to say that I that first one you said I do recognize. I just don't know if it's the most current. Yeah, it looks like 19.86 is 2022 data. I do have an Excel file where I do a side by side comparison of all the tax rates in the district, but I'm happy to send to you. But there it is for me. I said I resent that letter for Molly. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Should be that very last page. You said on the last page. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not what I was looking at. Go right here, you know what I just sent to you. Oh, you just sent it to you. It was from what David had said to the entire board. Oh, there it is. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Nice. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Have you ever played Tooth Fairy to me? Yeah. Woo -hoo. Okay. My dad's pretty good. You're just Molly, I think we're, you're, you need Molly for anything else. No, right? Molly. No, we're yeah. good. You go get, go get healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, right. Molly. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Molly. Um, I'm just going to take a quick minute to close public comment, unless the public has anything else they'd like to say. Oh, it's all set. Okay, thanks. So, 651. Mrs. Cole has spoken to the public. All right, so principal's report. Principal report. Yeah, we've got two parts. I'm going to do special at first. Yeah, you can. Let's do it. Yeah. Well, Renee was super helpful in um, pulling in some numbers together so that we can share some special data. It's double sided from the back. Suddenly, I have a jingle for everything. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I know you guys just got it. So, I was just going to give you a second just to look at it before we 
and chatted. The front is just, um, the front graph is really just number of students per grade um, that are identified um, under one of the categories of special education. And the pie chart on the back um, shows you um, the different categories of identification and, and how many of our students fall under each category. Uh, speech language. What are um, they? Can you? Can you? Yep. Yeah. Um, we've got developmental delay, speech and language, um, specific learning disability, okay. autism, and deafblind. Okay. Thank you. So as a comparison to other schools into the state, our special education numbers um, generally fall a little lower than the state averages as far as number of students identified. Um, our current um, identification rate is 15.2% and the New Hampshire average is 17.4. So we're just a little under the state average as far as identifications. Um, and you can see on the pie chart on the back as well, um, you know, we do have a variety of students with a variety of needs. Mm -hmm. um, and some of those students have primary disabilities and then also secondary disabilities. So some students could carry multiple codings. Right. Um, this is just representing their primary disability, but some do have secondary and even some have tertiary disabilities. So, so this pie chart only it but only includes one their primary disability. Right. Okay. Yeah. It includes all students, but they're categorized yes. by their primary disability. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. But it means that one student represented here could also be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so on that back page where you're looking at the, the pie chart, and then um, Renee did a great job of pulling um, the IDEA federal grant funding and the bullets, if you follow them down, show the unfortunate decline in our um, IDA funding here in um, Kensington and what we're expecting for next year. It's a pretty significant decrease over what we're accessing um, this year and in previous years. Um, but I mean, I'm super proud of our special ed team here. I think we do an amazing job with our students and meeting students' needs. Yeah. Um, I'm not always a data person, I'll be honest, especially when we're talking about kids and what they need. Um, but I think it's important for you to see really how comprehensive the services are that we're providing for kids in the building and, um, and kind of think about what that, those budget items go to and we do um, we do have a lot of supports for our kid in this, the kids in this building with um, speech and language, and occupational therapy, physical therapy, American Sign Language, edu educational audiology, assistive technology, orientation, mobility. I mean, um, we really do offer a lot of supports and services for our students. And, um, we have really, really good people on our team here. So yeah. Super proud of them and the work that they do with our kids. Becky, can you help me understand that third bullet under federal grants? So, like 19 and 20, it says we use 71,000. Mm -hmm. 20, 21, we use 42. And then we're calling out this is what we expect to use this year, yet yeah. we only are allotted right. 50s for next year. So, I, I can talk to it a little bit because um, we've earmarked and written the grant. In the activities, and so that is how much we've written in the state of approved for us to use for this school district. But this is the last year that we could use consolidated money, where they gave the SAU one giant purse, okay. and we were allowed to delegate it based on needs. Next year, the money we got this year is earmarked um, for Kensington, and the money that we'll use the following year. You have two years to use a grant, you have a two year span, so you get it, and then you have two years to expend all the money um, by um, September 30th. Um, so that is like this year to support all the additional needs of students with special needs to supplement the great work that the building is doing. That is how much we wrote to the grant to support these students. That's also why you see such a big bump for next year because you can't put that services in the grant. You, that is why it's in your local budget now. Because yeah. um, we do not anticipate the IEP needs of these students to change. Right. 
and everything in orange is legally mandated by an IEP team under federal law for these students to receive their education in their school. Okay. I think too, it's a note to see the family survey that our parents yeah, just returned that. that had a really high favorable rate as far as feeling like valued partners on that child's IEP team. And um, I think that's important to highlight as well because it is. <laughs> I, think, I think this kind of data is really hard in a small school. Because oh yeah, okay. yes, yeah, yeah. And I actually I'm looking at the preschool numbers and kind of thinking what's happened in the last you know couple months in preschool. And we actually I believe now have six identified preschoolers, so that number has climbed up a little bit, which again is not um, unexpected. Mm -hmm. I think why we entered into the um, collaboration with Brentwood last year is because we were seeing an increased number of students coming out of young young students coming out of COVID who really needed a lot of supports and yes. so our numbers yeah. certainly reflect that at the preschool level. Okay. Yeah. It is, yeah. Well um, I just want to say thank you very much to our special education department and the team because I think that it's um, we have incredible supports here at the school. It's yep. it's it's really something to be proud of. Thank you for putting this together. I'm really wanting this data. This a little snippet of data every month. Data is fun. Of every, it is fun. <laughs> it's, but it's really, it's informative. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Well, I think it just highlights that you, your numbers for special ed are staying down, but $233,000 had to be put back into your budget. Right. Because of changes at the federal government. Not because right. we're doing a great job of figuring it out mm -hmm. yeah. out of our control. Yeah. Which is super that's frustrating. Cool. Yeah. Super frustrating. Yeah. Yes, it is. Um, I also have some virtual support if you want to need to go through that. Yeah. Yeah. Sick as well. Um, we're looking at positive community culture. I wrote about um, the Hour of Code, which Ms. McCarthy has given two community times in the month of December um, to, to work on. Um, coding with our students. And so our, our Rough Code is actually a worldwide event. There's like schools all over the, the world that are participating. Um, and it was just, we had the first one um, last week, we have the next one tomorrow actually. Um, and it was just really, really fun to watch all of the kiddos in the multi-purpose room all working on coding activities together. Um, the other like secret joy to that and for me was that oh my gosh we got all 130 devices to work at the same time <laughs> which was unbelievable like that's a feat i feel like we haven't like been able to accomplish for a long time but we actually were all able to get online which is so cool because we used to do whole school games of kahoot all together but and so I was just really excited to have all the devices online and working so um it was great the kids love it the kids love coding um and uh, we've got sort of our next installment of that tomorrow. Um, and Mrs. McCarthy's put together another great afternoon for us. So, um, Meaningful learning, I was just highlighting our parade that we had last month, which was really all about um, the kids' idea of creating a parade in Kensington. It and it was adorable. That was their idea. Yeah, so they read the book, Balloons Over Broadway, and they're like, yeah, we're going to do a parade in Kensington. Oh my gosh, I love that. It was so, so cool. They decided on, you know, what their um, floats would be. We did have one float malfunction that morning, I think, but, um, and what their puppets, and then they each had, like, different entertainments that they could do, you know, great. how the parade stops along the parade route, and you do the entertainment, yeah. and then, yeah. We had our MC who did a great job. Oh my gosh! Thank you. Um, yeah, and that was really, amazing. And and we like looking down on us from above. Like 
It yes. was hailing 30 <laughs> minutes before the parade. Right. And after. And started raining <laughs> as the last act of right. So somehow we snuck the parade in between the hail and the rain. Yes. So it was meant to be. I'm just excited to see what happens with the kid who is the MC because <laughs> that <laughs> child, whoever he is, yeah, I mean, he's got a career in uh, in entertainment ahead of him. Yeah, and so much of that was really ad lib too. That was really yeah, awesome that was really time. impressive. So it was really, you did a great job, just like kind of keeping us all entertained. But really, if you look at the whole parade, like it was so the great. reading, the writing, the creating, the yeah. community. I mean, there was so much that the kids had to do to pull that parade together. You know, writing invitations for you guys to come and. Um, it was just really, really. Yeah, there was, was so much work that went into that. Yeah, it was. It was evident. It was really evident. Um, really, the juggling. I mean, and then we just wrapped up December Dash, um, which uh, formerly known as Jingle Bell Jaunt, um, a new our new um, name for it. We we collected just over sixteen thousand or sixteen hundred items. Um, which was awesome, and then um, the Exeter Bluehawks um, football team came on Friday to carry the almost 1,700 pounds of food into the van to bring it down to um, the food pantry. So it was a, um, it was nice for them to come and help us out and carry all of that. So again, it's just a great community event helping our our um, local local food pantries, and the kids kids are a part of that. So. That's the right. kindergartners sorted it as it came in. The kindergartners had, they were sorting it into different yeah. categories. I really love that you're including them in that. It's not just, my mom went out and got a whole bunch of groceries and then brought them to school and I just went Well, they might, that might have happened. Right, But then right. once they get here, the yeah. kids physically have to, yeah. like, sort them into categories. They're involved with it. Yeah. yeah. And they sure. see what it, yeah. is happening with it. That's yeah. great. Yeah. So that's always super successful. So, um, you know, something we'll continue to do each holiday season, I imagine. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. A new business? No, not have any. Old business? Review that board member orientation. Okay, I don't, I don't have any changes for you this month, guys. Sorry about that. But um, there was something that I had written on my notes on a piece of paper that I, I can see right where it's sitting on my counter. It's not in my hand. Um, there was something you were going to, oh, it was uh, an explanation. You said that you had a letter that you oh, sent okay. to, yeah, I forgot to send that. That's fine, that's fine. So then once you get that, this is about just for, you know, the thousands of people watching. Um, <laughs> this is a, it was a letter that you had already written mm -hmm. explaining the budget process, basically. So I was just going to attach that. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's fine. And then, I mean, I think we're, we're getting there. We're basically yeah. there. Yeah. You know, I would, I, yeah. Yeah, it looks so, like you just, you added a, a bunch of links last time and just yeah. kind of cleaned things up a little bit. Yeah, just to try to make it more compact. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Awesome. All right, so then uh, maybe in, in, in January, I'll try to present the final. Yeah, and then we can get it up on the website. Yep. Yep, great. All right. Okay, great. And then uh, people-related matters? We do not have anything. Let me... Just real quick, I don't have my book with me. I was going to add a note. January. Final, uh, right, orientation. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'll, um, so. so I was saying, I'm, I used, so I sent last year's letter out on December 21st, so this is like about the time of year that I send this. So okay. I can email this to you. Is so it? you can see what, what last year's letter looked like. Um, I think I still had some sentences in there about being in the gym for proper distancing and all of that kind of. Because we're at Talbot, are we? Are we at Talbot? Or are we back? We're back here. We're back year. here. Okay, so I like I need to edit that sort of stuff out yeah, of the letter. Um, but I'll just email. If you, I mean, if you're going to send it out again in a, in a in a week or two, then I'll I will be on that mailing list. So. Um, don't worry about it. Oh, I've already got it up. Too. Oh, okay. So, all right. Um, but I probably should I just send it to you? Sure. So that I'm not emailing the whole board. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, people related matters. You don't have any. Okay. Personnel. You don't have any. 
Okay, um, it's time to adjourn. Our next meeting is January the 11th, here at the same time, same place. Um, we, do we have any need for non-public today? I don't believe so. Okay. That is the public hearing, yes. Oh, yes, and because we have our meeting first after? Or is the Usually public after. hearing is, isn't the, it's, it's a separate meeting that yeah. we have. We have the hearing and then the town has their hearing. Wait, I don't remember last, I don't think we had a meeting. We didn't, we, I don't think we did anything. We must have moved it to a different night or something. Uh, for your deliberative session, we did. We did a deliberative session on our time that we did. Public hearing too, though. Wait, you did a deliberative. Oh, yeah, 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 so the hearing. I'm thinking of the town deliberative yes. session. You yeah. do, you I was thinking of the deliberative session. So we usually oh. do a public hearing, then we do our meeting right after. Oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. I'm confusing the two as well, Joe. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. Yeah. So we always do that. Deliver sessions in February. In February. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. So, um, okay, so then we will see you at the next meeting, which is also the military hearing. And, uh, all right, I move that we adjourn at 7.07. Seven. Oh, it's 61 minutes. Is how long this meeting lasted. Nice job. I like it when things are like that. So. A second? A second. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you all.